There is a channel that I occasionally watch here on YouTube named The Still Report. I usually disagree with his views, but that's all right. It's good to challenge my own views. Anyway, he has stated that he believes that the violence in Charlottesville was from an agent provocateur. I'm not sure if I agree, but let's hear his arguments. Now, something to take note of about Bill here, Bill Still, is that he is someone who peddles homeopathy. Like this. Cancer loves acidic bodies. The water smacker not only raises the pH of the bottled water I buy from Costco, but ionizes the water with an electrical charge so that when you drink it, you get a little spark just to let you know it's working. The first result was I wasn't falling asleep in the middle of the day. The second result was my stomach didn't feel constantly acidic. <laughs> so, know that he's someone that will believe in things regardless of if it makes any sense or not. So, know that you know he also has some religious views and thinks that this is a fight of good and evil and all that sort of thing. So... Just take that into consideration when you're watching his video, the clips of his video, and so here we go. Good morning. I'm still reporting on the coup. I grew up in Virginia. I've covered just about every political race in detail for decades. I've even covered three Klan cross burnings. I printed one fuzzy picture of a cross burning, but back then, late 1970s, we didn't have digital cameras. We only had black and white film. You're certainly right that digital photography wasn't available in 1979. That much is certain. But color film was definitely available to you in 1979. Now, if you're talking about what was available to print in a newspaper, yeah, it was only 12% of newspapers in 1979, American newspapers, that had color print in them, at, at, in some part of the newspaper. A color print in newspaper was developed and first used in the late 50s. We could push that film to its light-gathering limit and still only have a blurry image of those cross burnings. Well, then it was more of an issue of the camera you were using, more importantly, the lens you were using, the speed of the lens, and even more importantly, if you were using a tripod. The rules of photography have not changed that much. They really were spectacular, however. We're not talking about a cross made of eight-foot lumber from Lowe's. These were crosses made from custom-sawed lumber, 30, 40, perhaps 50 feet high, a single piece of lumber. Oh, well, then it must have been just so majestic, right? <laughs> the atmosphere was always scary, dark, with a cloud of oppressive evil hovering over it. Sounds like the opening to a Stephen King novel. The Klansmen in their white sheets and little pointy hats, the crowd carrying baseball bats or guns, the air was thick with cigarette and cigar smoke, and all of it was protected by the cops. You knew not to step out of line. Heck, I was even fearful to try to photograph it. That's certainly fair. That's fair. But those days are gone. The last cross burning was somewhere between Warrenton, Virginia and Charlottesville around 1980. This image was from 2005. I found it on the Wikipedia page when I looked up cross burnings. There are plenty of other images that are from more recent years, from this year, from last year, from the year before that, from the year before that, from the year before that. I don't know what the hell you're talking about by the last cross burning was in 1980. You're full of shit. Sorry. That's 37 years ago. That's also the last time I've seen any Klansman dressed in his sheet. Congratulations, do you want a medal? Plenty of other people, including myself, have seen people in those robes and their pointy hats. Until yesterday. So apparently you've missed out on the marches that happen every year in some places in the United States. Why is love of one's nation suddenly associated with a Nazi swastika? Who would do that? I don't know, the people that you seem to have not been able to see even though they've been there. The white nationalists, the Ku Klux Klan, you know, those people. And since when has the Nazi symbol been associated with the flag of the Confederacy? Who would do that? The white nationalists, the Ku Klux Klan, you know, those people. And since when is any of this to be associated with the NRA? 
the white nationalists, the Ku Klux Klan, you know, those people? Not in my lifetime. So I guess you were born in a time when wormholes were real wormholes and time travel was real time travel. Real hunters would never go around waving assault rifles in threatening fashion. Hey everyone, look, it's the no true hunters Scotsman fallacy. That's not what the NRA is about. That may not be what the NRA is supposed to be about, but the Klansmen, the white nationalists, they certainly uphold the NRA. So maybe the NRA should denounce these people. Well, they won't because they want any support they can get. Just like Trump. You know right away that screams agent provocateurism. I suppose if you've never seen uh, anything about the Klan or white nationalists since 1980, I guess you could believe that. Why is it that Klansmen in full sheet suddenly pop up in broad daylight in the most liberal small city in Virginia, Charlottesville? I guess for the same reason that dozens of gatherings and marches by them in other parts of the United States, sometimes in major cities, has occurred since the 1980s. Could this really all be in defense of Robert E. Lee? Well, no. Most of it is just in their defense of their racist beliefs. Now, I don't agree with pulling down these statues. This is destruction of history. I fully agree. They were put there as something solid to remind people of history, knowing a day would come when history is no longer taught. These statues have been coming down all around the nation, but no KKK folk have appeared. What, are you kidding? They've shown up every single time. What's wrong with you, man? Do you just... Are you living in a cave? The Virginia State Police announced last night that most of the so-called white nationalist crowd were from out of state. You would also find that a lot of the people that were protesting that are from out of state because they want to say, hey, this is messed up. You're destroying parts of history. Who financed their travels? They get help from friends. They might start some sort of a, a GoFundMe or something on that order. You know, the same way that everyone else who traveled all the way to those places to protest this going on. It's messed up that these statues are being taken down. To me, as I've said elsewhere, to me they should put a big inscription at the bottom of them saying, hey, this is the messed up ways that we used to be. This is what this statue stands for. But it is a part of history. Typically, they aren't the most wealthy folk. These people have been thoroughly infiltrated by the FBI for many, many years. Certainly, they know if there was money thrown their way to travel to Charlottesville. This smells like a setup to me. Does it smell like your alkalinic ionized water? Someone is deliberately staging racial violence once again to try to blame it on President Trump. Think about this. The only time Trump has said anything negative about them is when they do something violent. It's a shallow, pitifully weak attempt, but that doesn't matter to, number one, the foreign press, especially the British press, and number two, the far-left true believers. Trump folks aren't buying this. They see it for what it is, and what it is has a name. Agent Provocateur. Well, your hunch isn't any sort of proof. You'll have to supply some proof of that. Just like people who say that they're being bussed in. Okay, fine. Give some proof. Why don't you show the buses? Something. I learned about agent provocateurs early in life, 1971, up close and personal, when I attended the big anti-war rallies in 1971 on the Mall in Washington, where the largest crowd ever protested the Vietnam War. I pushed my way to the front lines between the protesters and the police to get pictures. There was no violent intent on the part of the millions gathered, but I saw a small group of maybe 30 or 40 push their way to the front and start throwing rocks and bottles at the police. They were not part of the main group, but clearly there to try to incite a riot. And that gave the police justification to start lobbing tear gas canisters into the crowd. I think that's awesome that you were able to see that for what it was. But where is your proof that that's what's going on now? I'm not seeing any proof from anyone on this. People are, are making these statements, but, I mean, there are a number of YouTube channels of people that have those kinds of views that are getting 
footage of the people that are there uh, protesting the statues coming down. Those people aren't fake. And if you think that they are, give some proof. Anyway, the rest of his video is kind of going into some religious crap, so I'm not going to bother putting it in this, because there's no, there's no point in trying to refute religious views, so...